Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? I, I told in the past that I have trouble speaking into mics, so just wave if you're having trouble hearing me. So I'm Charlene Schramm. I am a program officer with the National Heart, Lung, Blood Institute, and I appreciate the invitation to come today and talk to you about the um, top med, our top med program, which stands for the Transomic for Precision Medicine Program. So I've said that I'm a program officer. Probably the only people in the room who understand what that meant are those of you who are also program officers at, at the NIH. But what that means is that um, I serve a role within the top med similar to Colin's team at NH NHGRI for the, the comp program. And I'm hopeful that a colleague of mine, Rebecca Beer, has joined us. She, ah, here she is in front, great. She would be the um, orthologue to Colin um, uh, for the Top Men program. So I'm going to start with the um, take home message. And that is Top Med program really wants to partner with IMPC Comp. So to get to there, uh, how do I forward? There we go. Uh, <clears throat> I want to just go over um, a few of the top meds um, history, its origins and goals, uh, talk a little bit about how it was launched and how it's being implemented, a very brief um, update on the scientific progress, and a couple of references here and there on plans for the future. Um, this is amorph amorphous enough that I don't even have its own dedicated slide. So the Top Med program um, grew out of a uh, workshop that was convened by the NHLBI in 2014, where they generated a number of recommendations, um, uh, first and foremost, to establish a whole genome sequencing program to generate a diverse resource with um, a diversity of, of ethnic racial, racial populations to invest, invest in additional omic measures, and to support studies of disease-associated genetic variants and their functions, and to establish a scientific data commons with a web portal. So the last one I'm not going to talk about very much because NIH has, um, in the intervening time, stepped up to start work on an NIH data commons. So I'm hopeful that in future meetings of this group, you'll get updates from that group. I'm also not going to talk a lot about uh, the um, supporting studies, uh, functional analysis of variants. That is something that, again, we're very much interested in a partnership with your, your group in order to help us move forward in that direction. Um, I will talk to you about how we have implemented, implemented the first three recommendations. So the Top Med program is, uh, it consists of a number of components and a number of roles of those components. There's a group of, of cores that provide data generation. That data goes to uh, um, uh, informatics resource research center and uh, data coordinating center for the um, harmonization and QC. The data then is um, shared within the, the organization through a cloud platform. And there are a number of, of uh, investigator groups that draw on that to develop new tools conduct analyses, and then that data can go back into the cloud. There also is working groups such as our um, uh, ethics, legal, and, and uh, socioeconomic indicators group. Um, what's not on this slide, but is also a huge part of Top Med is a, a number of, a huge number of other working groups that are either disease or organ uh, focused. So if you want information uh, 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 high level uh, on the Top Med program, here's uh, our URL to NHLBI's website. My apologies for my um, not quite getting the uh, animation correct on this slide. But to get more detail, I would refer you to the data coordinating site, nhlbiwgs.org. 
and here what you can't see on the slide and what's uh, indicated by the oval is a tab that's available to the public of the list of projects and studies that are part of the top med program there also is a tab that uh, provides information on the data that's av uh, available and also data standards that have been developed by the program. So these data standards include sample randomization, um, whole genome sequencing data formatting, processing, there's RNA-seq pipeline, and there's the URL for the data standards. So there are a huge number of cohorts currently participating in top med. So the question is, how did NHLBI select which, to, uh, which cohorts to include? We used an X01 funding opportunity announcement. So an X01, for those of you who are not familiar with, with it, and that's a lot of people because it's an unusual mechanism, is one that does not provide any money whatsoever. But it does provide access to um, data production cores that are supported by the NHLBI. So these data production cores um, include, for example, the whole genome sequencing. The X01 applications are received and peer-reviewed, and then the NHLBI uh, selected cohorts to put forward based on their scientific merit, that is the impact score uh, from peer review, and also whether a, a particular cohort fills a gap in a disease area, ethnicity, or a type of omics proposed um, for data generation. The selected co cohorts are then assigned to one of the omics production cores. They do what they do, and then the data gets returned to the IRC and DCC, the Informatics Research Center and the Data Coordinating Center, which then provide the, the data back to the investigators to um, uh, work together on analysis of the data. And then after the standard embargo, the data does become available through the um, uh, dbGaP request process. And um, one goal we have is to make that uh, access to data uh, easier. So hopefully um, in the near future we'll be able to tell you more about um, shortcuts to getting to the data. So as I said, there's a large number of projects that are already participating in top med. So we have about 40. Um, amongst them, there's uh, 65 different studies. This comes out to over 1,000 investigators. And some of the ones that I would point out to you here. Uh, I don't know if you can see. There we go. Um, there's uh, here at the top, asthma in African descent populations. We also have a couple of the major uh, NHLBI cohorts, the Framington Heart Study and the Jackson Heart Study. We also have uh, over here um, sickle cell disease. So even though the, the main focus of this program is common diseases, we uh, also are including uh, rare diseases. So what are the diseases that are being included and what is the racial ethnic breakdown. So um, top med is organized into phases, and each phase is essentially a year or one um, solicitation of, of X01 and one selection round of X01 cohorts. For the first three phases, recall that, this, that we didn't get started until um, after 2014, so we have just made the decisions on our fifth phase but uh, our, we have the data generation only through the phase three. So what we do have for th through phase three is for whole genomes, over 120,000 genomes um, sequenced, uh, actually more than that have passed the QC. Of the breakdown, uh, 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 the largest amount uh, is European ancestry, but also a good chunk of African ancestry and, and his Hispanic uh, populations. The breakdown by di disease area is shown on the uh, pie chart on the right. As you can see, asthma is a major uh, disease focus. Um, there also is a large chunk of studies that are kind of thrown together because they are multi-phenotype cohorts. That is, they were chosen because they had significance to the heart, lung, blood mission 
but they actually are collecting phenotype data much more broadly. Um, so we had trouble putting them in a category. Other disease areas are uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, hypertension, stroke, uh, coronary artery disease, and uh, as I've already mentioned, sickle cell disease. The racial ethnic um, distribution uh, varies by study and by disease group. So here are some examples uh, standardized uh, um, against uh, percentage per study. Some of these studies are much larger than the others. But the, what we can see is that this is the kind of data that we're looking at to assure that we have represent, representation across the cohorts. Mm -hmm. So the, the um, uh, abbreviations at the bottom, the hypertension, blood pressure is the first, uh, lipids, venous th um, thrombotic embolism, AFib, early onset myocardial infarction, uh, coronary obstructive pulmonary disease, asthma, sickle cell disease, and hemophilia are um, uh, disease areas where we have very active investigations. So I said that I'm not going to talk a lot about our future plans, but I can talk about what we're trying to work on right now. We are trying to continue to build the components within Top Med. So we have, as I've said, been building cohorts using that X01 mechanism. It's still operational, though right now our, uh, we have a call out specifically for uh, soliciting X01 applications focused on blood disorders, since that is one that um, it's been identified by NHLBI, uh, particularly sickle cell disease, as a um, major focus in our strategic vision, and um, therefore is one that uh, is also of great interest to the top men. Um, right below that, in this group of components, you see the centralized omics resource, um, the acronym CORE, which is appropriate because these are the service cores. This is where the data is being generated. It includes um, a whole genome sequencing as well as a variety of other omics services. There have been um, uh, funding opportunity announcements or RFAs released that have now um, been awarded and are uh, ramping up um, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to give you progress reports on them in the future. One is for um, uh, what we call cooperative agreements for developing uh, methods and tools based on transomic data. And then uh, also a more recent R01 RFA specifically to integrate the transomic data um, using more than one at one time. We have a number of collaborations within NIH that we are setting up with partners. Um, one major partnership is with the NIH Data Commons. So this is an effort um, led by um, NIH's Common Fund, but is, has the goal of uh, developing a, a one-stop platform where investigators can go to get data. The, they're starting as a pilot project, and we're very thrilled that TopMed was selected as one of the entities to serve in that uh, pilot. There also are model organism databases within that pilot. We also uh, 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 partner with uh, CMG's sister uh, consortium, the um, Centers for Common Diseases Genomics. And most important, we wish to encourage TopMed data to be used by the scientific community by uh, encouraging um, uh, investigators to uh, uh, sign up to access the data and uh, do preliminary analysis and submit um, investigator-initiated grant applications. We also encourage um, top med data to be used for applications for career development awards. So this is a multi-pronged strategy, hoping to build and enhance the top med resource and to build on the diversity while adding new non-traditional cohorts. So I've been talking about transomic, but I never really defined that. So. Um, the data I've talked to up to now has been mostly the whole genome. That's certainly the richest level of data that we have right now. 
there has been a number of working groups in the disease areas that have got together, worked on harmonizing across cohorts, doing uh, um, cross-study uh, genomics association analysis, and they've identified not just millions of variants, but hundreds of millions of variants, which comes as no surprise to those of you who are working on other large genome programs. So how is it that we are going to get to figuring out which of those variants need to be followed up for uh, mechanistic studies, uh, confirmation through uh, functional assays, development through clinical validation, and then uh, use for translational medicine. So the approach for the, trans, uh, the top end program is to use a transomic approach. So in addition to um, uh, data production centers that do whole genome sequencing, we have resources to provide transcriptomics, methylomics, uh, metabolomics, and uh, metagene metagenome uh, sequencing. The idea or the, the hope, the aspiration at this point is that the combination of these in combination with the new analysis techniques being developed through the program and other programs, we'll be able to start from that hundreds of millions of variants and filter that down to tens of variants that are the top candidates that can then be followed up with functional analyses. So what has the TopMed program actually accomplished in addition to all this wonderful data generation? So we are well behind the CMGs as far as the total number of publications. I very much uh, envy your list of hundreds of publications. Um, this slide is out of date. It's more than five publications. Uh, it's, it's more like 10, so still well below the 400 plus of the CMGs. But um, of these publications, most notably, there's one that describes the analysis commons, which is the infrastructure within TopMed that the investigators use to do their cross-studies analyses. There's also a number of papers that um, are identif uh, identifying candidate variants. Some of them have also done some level of functional assays. Um, uh, particularly leveraging off of NHLBI has a uh, RFA program um, that's um, in its final year for doing functional assays. And um, recall that I had said that the broad phenotypes include more than just those of interest to the National Heart Lung Blood Institute. One of these papers um, used the Framington, Framingham Heart Study data on brain MRIs to find loci associated with uh, brain volume differences. There are also are a number of other uh, submissions that are accessible through the preprint server uh, bioarchive. Um, if you do, give you a warning, if you do a search of either PubMed or bioarchive for TopMed, you will come up with a huge number of hits of papers that uh, mention it but, uh, but may not have been using the data for the analysis in that paper. So that's, that's why you'll see more hits than I've got listed on this page. But I'm hopeful that very soon I'll have a much uh, uh, more intriguing number to give to you on studies that have generated potential candidates for uh, functional follow-up. There are over 200 papers um, uh, proposed by top med working groups that are either in the concept, analysis, or preparation phage phases. And um, uh, top med, as I said, is also working with the NIH data commons to um, uh, improve the accessibility of not just the data, but the outcome coming out of these working groups. So I had confess that I wasn't going to actually have a slide on future plans because it's a bit of hand waving, so here goes the hand waving part. So the reason I'm the one up on this stage is that it's my interest within NHLBI's program office to um, advance uh, the application of functional assays to the discoveries that are coming out of this program. NHLBI is uh, staff are talking amongst ourselves and getting uh, input from our advisory panels on ways to do so. 
we, I would certainly would love to hear any thoughts you all have during the break or, or later today. One thing we do participate in, we do already uh, provide, uh, it's about a million dollars per year to the comp program from NHLBI. So we already show an interest in um, use of the, the mouse models and we very much want to continue that in some form. Um, I don't have a clock here, but I suspect I'm running over. Um, I would like to just uh, encourage anybody to contact me or my colleague, uh, Rebecca, if you have any co uh, questions about the Top Med program. We'll be here, uh, 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 I'll be here all day and, and Rebecca for at least part of the day. And here's our email addresses. Thank you very much. Yeah, so one of our big discussion points yesterday was data integration with an outward view to, to, to these other large data sets and getting a foothold in the commons is a real objective for us. So I hope Charlene can be the contact person to work together on that. So now our, our most recent new partner, yeah. tell us about Kids First. 